Hello everybody and thank you for joining me on today's video presentation about catheter ablation of ventricular tachycardia in patients with left ventricular assist device. First, I would like to share with you this important study which was conducted on 12,144 patients with left ventricular assist device. The authors studied the effect of neurohormonal blockade on long-term survival. Here we see the results of the study. On the left side is the Kaplan-Meier survival analysis, which shows that after more than four years of follow-up in patients without neurohormonal blockade, the survival is around 40%. However, in patients with optimal neurohormonal blockade, it means a beta blocker, mineralocorticoid antagonist, and an ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker, the survival is around 75%. Therefore, optimal medical therapy is also a significant factor in predicting survival even in patients who have a circulatory support and left ventricular assist device. Now let's have a look at our first patient, a 48 years old male patient with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy and low ejection fraction. The patient received a left ventricular assist device in 2016. In 2018, due to frequent monomorphic VT, he received amiodarone and mexilitin. He was stable until recently in March 2020, he was admitted for emergency VT ablation due to refractory sustained ventricular tachycardia. Here is the best baseline ECG of the patient. We can see the ventricular tachycardia. The first point is due to a lot of artifacts on the ECG, it's very difficult to use pace map. However, in these patients with left ventricular assist device, the VTs are hemodynamically stable and we can use activation mapping for ablation of the VTs. From the morphology, we can see a left bundle branch block pattern of the VT with early RS transition, which implies an exit on the left side of the septum. When we look to the inferior axis and the positive one, we can also suggest that the exit should be basal and superior septal. We already knew the possible exit site of the VT, so we just needed to have a targeted limited activation map. As you can see here, the yellow point on the map shows the earliest point, and on the left side, we can see the earliest signal, which was 80 milliseconds earlier than the beginning of the QRS complex. Here we can see the same signal in our EP recording system. And here we can see the ablation effect on the VT. Three seconds after starting the RF application, the VT was terminated. Here we can see the successful ablation site on the septum superior basal and far away from the left ventricular assist device. Actually, a normal scar-related VT which had nothing to do with our LVAT. Now let's have a look at the second patient with a different mechanism for ventricular arrhythmia. 69 years old female patient with coronary artery disease, old myocardial infarction, three vessel disease and low ejection fraction was admitted for LVAT implantation. She experienced frequent ventricular fibrillation refractory to medical therapy after left ventricular assist device implantation. Therefore, an ablation procedure was planned to control the ventric VF episodes. Here we can see the baseline ECG with typical changes for a patient with HeartMate 3 left ventricular assist device. Here we can see a common problem that we see during catheter ablation because the LVAT is a huge metallic object. When the catheter is closed, 
to the left ventricular assist device, the system cannot visualize and localize the catheter properly. And this is a major challenge during catheter ablation. In order to solve the problem, or at least minimize it, we have to put the catheter close to LVAT system and after that initializing the system. Here we can also see the reason for frequent VF after LVAT implantation. Usually LVAT should face the mitral valve, but in this patient it actually too superior and too lateral and therefore is in close proximity with the scar tissue of old myocardial infarction. And that was the reason for frequent VF, the mechanical induction of ventricular arrhythmia after LVAD implantation. To solve the problem, we have two options. First, to revise the left ventricular assist device or to ablate the scar area around it. And that was exactly what we decided to do in this patient. Here you can see the substrate mapping and also the final ablation result of the scar area around the LVAT input. And we ablated all the late potentials and scar area in order to prevent mechanical induction of ventricular fibrillation, which fortunately was successful in this patient. So once again, thank you for joining me on this video presentation. I hope you find it interesting and looking forward to see you again on my future video presentation. Bye and stay healthy.